Hello, my name is Manchis and I'm a content recreator. I started learning game development in May and by the end of August I already put out my first micro game and already participated in two game jams. And if you've seen my previous video, you know how well that went. But anyway, after two game jams back to back, I realized I needed a break from jamming and I wanted to focus on the project that I was working on. And things were going to plan until they weren't. Through no fault of my own, of course. See, one day I opened YouTube, still blissfully unaware of decisions I was going to make that day. And I saw a new video from Sasquatch B Game Studios called Sasquatch B Game Jam 2024 theme reveal. And it piqued my curiosity because I didn't know this YouTuber slash game developer was hosting his own game jam. The theme turned out to be a wolf, which I thought sounded pretty fun. But I also learned that this jam is sponsored by the company called Genies, which meant that it had prize money. Now this, this is when neurons in my brain activated. According to my single brain cell, this gem was not going to be massive or had a lot of participants, which meant that it would increase the chance of winning some cash. And from what I've noticed looking at other game gems, looks sell. And I thought, what if I created a game with a simple mechanic and just polished the hell out of art and game feel? Of course, you could look at it in a different light and see that I've been doing Game Jam only for three months at this point and I was not likely to win anything. But... Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. <laughs> Another reason I wanted to join the Jam is because I really like the theme and it inspired the game idea pretty quickly. I started thinking along the lines of merging or evolving cats and I was kind of inspired also by this game called Wobble Dogs, where you could create some fucked up looking dogs. So when I was thinking about gameplay, I was like, hmm, what if we evolve the cats using some sort of DNA from different creatures or alchemy of some sorts? And this is when I landed on the idea of using DNA as ingredients to evolve some special cats. But now, of course, I needed to figure out how would the player know which ingredients to use. And I remembered playing this small free game called Ritual, where you would figure out which word to use based on the riddles. And in general, I love riddles, I love puzzles, so I thought it would fit perfectly in the game. So, let me recap the main idea of the gameplay. In order to make a cat, a special cat, you need four ingredients. First, you need a DNA from a mammal from an anthropod, from a plant, and then an alchemy element. Each category has 12 ingredients to choose from. If you pick just any ingredients and use them on a cat embryo, you will get a normal cat. And if you choose one of the correct combinations of the ingredients, you will evolve a special kind of cat. So how do you learn the correct combination of the ingredients? Well, this is where the riddle book comes in. Each entry in the book has four riddles. Each riddle refers to a specific ingredient from one of the categories. So, one riddle for each category, in no particular order. And with the main idea of the game figured out, I got to work. My main concern when I started was obviously the code, because I was pretty new at this point and I was not sure if I would even be able to implement this idea and also do it in just a week's time. This is why I first made sure that I had a working prototype before moving on to make art and other assets for the game. And I'll be honest, it took me less than half a day. Of course, also thanks to ChatGPT. I'll be honest, at this point in time, I was still on this ChatGPT needle. So I asked it a lot about how to implement stuff and what features to use. This was the first time I used dictionaries, which for some reason scared me as a concept before. But now I think they're pretty neat. Also, apart from the theme, the game jam had another requirement the one from the sponsors. The Genius company provided us with a 3D character pack and we had to use one of the characters in our game. But there was a lot of freedom. We could put custom shaders on it and create different animations and such. And this was actually pretty fun to see how some people got creative with it. Since I'm making strictly 2D games, I wasn't sure how to fulfill this requirement. But then I thought, let's just have a narrator. 
a 3D NPC that pops up during the dialogue UI and dumps lore on you. Unfortunately, at this point, I didn't know that there are websites that can make different animations for your 3D models, so I had to make do with what I've got, which was not a lot in terms of emotions. So, for example, I had to use a jump animation to show excitement. So, as the technical part was done, it was time to draw. You see, as a newbie game dev, I still had this preconceived notion in my mind that coding was the hardest part and that I would be done with art pretty quickly. And this naivete was quickly ripped apart and trampled when I actually started making art for the game. I did not realize how long it would actually take me to draw everything. And before that, I even planned to increase the amount of mythical cats in the game. Anyway, at this point, I was not confident in my digital art skills, so I decided to draw everything by hand. I also really like the idea of the game having this hand-drawn look to it. So how did my art process actually go? First, I had to do some research and look up what kind of mythical cats existed in various cultures. Of course, I could make up my own fictitious cats, but I thought it would be a nice touch if the game had uh, some folklore and actual history behind it. During that process, I created a Milo note board where I put all the info I found, with some picture references and history tidbits which could also not only help me create the art for the game, but also create some riddles. So after gathering enough information, I got started with the drawings. First, I sketched all the cats out with a pencil, which took pretty long time because I had to figure out how I want each cat to look like. Then I started doing line work with two black liners, one with a brush tip and there was one really small for finer details. I also had to draw all the ingredients prior to the UI, so my fans physically hurt after I was done with all the art. Then I scanned everything and painted the sprites in Krita using the watercolor brush. I spent all my free time on this game and art was taking up so much time that the only time I actually had to think of riddles when I was laying in bed tired. And it shows. You can see that some of the riddles are a product of a sleep-deprived mind. One riddle actually didn't have any sense at all and it made zero connection to the ingredient it was supposed to link to, but thankfully it was caught during the testing process. So after finishing all the art and putting it in the game, I only had a day left. And it was time to start polishing things and adding UI and such. And that's where it dawned on me. I realized the game might be too frustrating for some players. And I didn't want players to drop my game just because it was taking them a long time to solve the riddles. So I created a hint system. So if you're having trouble with solving stuff, you can toggle an option to see which riddle belongs to which group, narrowing down your choice tremendously. Also, when submitting a game jam, I included a text file which had all the solutions. So yeah, the polishing process was intense. Everywhere I thought I could add juice, I did. Custom buttons with press animations, all the sounds, every animation I could think of. So this game would have this complete feel to it. I really wanted to make this game as satisfying to play as possible. Also, all hail Kevin MacLeod an MVP for all of the creators, with his banger royalty-free music. Anyway, with several hours left before the submission deadline, the game was polished and ready. I named the game Catalyst. Now it was time to play and rank other games. So, let me explain how the placement system worked. In order to keep things fair, the judges would play all the games themselves and decide who gets the cash prize, and it doesn't matter where you land it in the community vote. But still, top 3 community rated games would get a special shout out in the Sasquatch B Game Jam video. There were 32 entries and I played and rated every entry that I could, which was really fun. Honestly, I wished I streamed this process. Anyway. Let me not waste your time and actually reveal the placement. Unbelievably so, my delusions paid off and I got first place in the community vote. I am very humbled and grateful for that. That's all I'm going to say because I'm still at a loss for words. So after a week or so, the judge's decision came and I learned that I got third place, which gave me the perfect opportunity to use this picture. All 
Also, I would like to take this opportunity and thank everyone who supported me and thank my friend Leon for no reason whatsoever, just because he asked to be mentioned in this video. So, now what? Sometimes it still feels a little bit crazy that I actually managed to win something and deliver a game that I really liked and other people liked too. If you're interested in playing Catalyst, the game is linked in the description. I don't want to ramble on more, but I hope this video encourages some of you. If you're still here, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. 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 Mm.